uh, that I will be eagerly anticipating and waiting uh, someday to visit that your beautiful campus. Definitely, we Pakistan, will look forward to it. Yes, and also know Pakistan has got beautiful features as well. So I am very, very pleased to be here today. Yes, yeah, so I will uh, share my screen again as I uh, tried to do earlier on. So just a quick one to say I'm really pleased uh, for your institute, the Entrepreneurial uh, Development Center, for putting this together. Uh, because uh, of my role, uh, I play a lot with the UNESCO uh, chair and also with the internationalization of my university, University of Lincoln. I'm always very pleased in to see programs that you know bring international, that bring people you know together. And I'm also a champion and promoter of uh, diverse learning. I always promote diverse learning. So I'm quite pleased that the composition of the attendees are made up from different categories of uh, and work of life and ages. Uh, so this is really pleasing. So also as my role as the program leader for BA Enterprise and uh, Business Development at the University of Lincoln, so I be, we you know engage students to start up. My students uh, start their business before they graduate. So you know, so I'm quite you know keen on startup. So I'm really pleased that you know on the basis of this uh, 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 workshop that uh, the Institute for Business Administration in Karachi is organizing. So I've tapped into to say how can I you know contribute to this uh, I you know, this wonderful innovation of theirs. So I thought I'm going to talk about from idea generation to starting up a business. So for most of us who are keen to learn how you can, you know, uh, develop ideas that will turn into reality in terms of business and those also how you can then progress and grow that business. So that will be the focus of my discussion today. So it's more idea generation and starting up. Okay, so just as you know, we the question might be to say, uh, that's also uh, my business school at Lincoln. You didn't see well from the video. So hopefully any of you can one day visit us as well. So the question that comes in most of the times is always, you know, how do people create businesses? When we see entrepreneurs who are doing good, we begin to think, how do they do that? You know, how did they achieve that success? So, but the question is more simplified if we look at it more critically. So you will see that, yes, Coming up with ideas, yes, starting businesses or turning an idea into a business opportunity is not as simple as that. Most cases, the entrepreneurs that we know, they have created so many ideas, started something and failed. So, but it's only when you have tried, then you can only succeed. When you have not tried, you will never succeed. And that is why I always champion the activities or actions that we need to take in order to become entrepreneurial, in order to have that opportunity to try something and see how, if it's gonna work or it's not gonna work. So that is the focus of today's uh, discussion uh, which is looking up, you know, how do you come up with ideas or how do you find solutions to problems? Remember, in today's session, I will be emphasizing about problems. Why do I do so? Because every business idea comes out from a problem. So until we find the right problem, we may not find the right business idea. 
But also when we start thinking about the problem, then we begin to think about how then or what can we do to solve that problem? And, and then also we, we, need, we need to evaluate the feasibility of what we can do in order to solve the problem for which we have identified. And then when we do that, that's when we be becoming entrepreneurial and then we are beginning to think about venture creation. So you can see the steps. And that is exactly what I will be talking today. So today, we're going to look at this uh, framework. So we will try to examine how you identify problems and then how this problem can lead to proposition, business proposition. Then having identified the problem, we need to evaluate the problem. Evaluating the problem then leads us to try to examine the internal and the external issues that might be it might involve the idea for which we are trying to float and then when we've done that we need to think about how can we measure success remember every time you spend as an entrepreneur every time you spend as a business person you need to justify the time so if you're a young you know, a lady or a young uh, a guy, and then you have option to go take up a, an employment or a job somewhere in a company. So if you're going to leave that job, if you're not going to look for a job and then set up your own business, then you need to account for the time. So you need to account for the resources that you have used to set up the business. So that is why we always have to think about how do we measure success? So these are the three areas I'm going to be touching upon in the next uh, 30, uh, 40 minutes, but also maybe some other time, I will have the opportunity to engage us in activities. So today, it will be me trying to introduce this concept. So, but in the next, if I have opportunity to meet some of you, all of you some other time we will go into scenarios i like to go into propositions and i like also to go into problem solving with my students so this is where we're going to start so but before i do that you can also drop a uh, if you want if you have got any question i don't know if the raise hand button is if it's on we can raise our hands and i'm quite happy to answer any question but i will always stop to take up any question okay so problem identification one of one of, one of the things i would like to you know give you as a takeaway for today section or uh, for the meeting i'm having with you today is that for anything you want to do whether you're thinking about starting a business, whether you're thinking about becoming an entrepreneur, you should reflect upon existing issues around you. So you should try to identify problems that are related to your own experience or problems that are related to people around you or your family members or your friends or problems that are related to the community where you live or problems that are related to the customers, the market, wh which you already have had experience. So in that regard, so I will employ you that when you think about, oh, what do I wanna do as a business? I want you to get started by saying, asking your question, asking this question, how can I, or how can we improve this kind of customer service in this kind of X industry. So you are talking about I or we, or you can also ask, you know, how can I, or how can we make this service or product work better? So when you pick up a product, when you see you know, any goods, you should reflect on, upon and say, how can I change this? Remember, there's no idea that you're going to start that's going to be you know, completely new unless 
you know, you know, only very few that entrepreneurs do that. But one of the ways you can start is trying to change something, incremental change in a small way. So you could ask, how can I improve this product? Or how can I improve this service? So that's the question that I also want you to always reflect upon. But another way, like I said, it could be through your experience or your family experience is to ask this question, how can we make use of this product? How can we make use of it? Or you could ask, how can we be able to help disadvantaged people, you know, suffering from this, and in doing so, we're able to help in your communities where you live, you could ask that question, how can we help the community to solve this kind of problem? Or how can we help the community to provide this kind of service to them? So from your experience, you should be able to know some of the problems that the communities where you are, you know, face. And I want to tell you that your startup should always be based on problems when you do so not only that you're going to you know be emotionally attached but also the community around you will also be emotionally attached to the business proposition because it has come out from a problem which you have identified within your society within your environment and within your community so when we do talk about questions or problems, you do not just ask questions and stop. You ask questions so many times and try to reframe it. So I started off by asking, or we asking, how can I do this? Or how can we change this? Or how can we do this? So, but you can change that question when you begin to ask those questions to say, why is this a problem? Why? You can also say, but who faces this problem? You know, you can also ask, but where does this problem come from? Or where does it occur? Or how does it occur? Or how frequently does this problem occur? Or who feel most about this problem? And if you then identify who feel most about this problem, then those people will be your customer segment. Those people will be your target customers, which we're going to talk about later on. So you can see whatever your idea you're having, forget about it. Put it one side. Start asking questions. Entrepreneurs ask lots of questions. It's by asking questions, thinking about problems, not solutions. So it's always wrong. When people jump into creating solution, we don't create solution until you have created problems. So entrepreneurs explore problems in order to solve pro the problems by creating a business idea. So you can see that we our step our starting uh, process for becoming entrepreneurs, our starting process for becoming you know, going into business or becoming a business person or business woman or a businessman will be to think about problems where within around you. Until you are able to identify those problems, then you, you will be able to create an idea. Anyone got any question in terms of problem solving or problem identification? Any question? Are we all happy to continue? I think we are. Okay. Yeah, maybe... Yes, we're good. Yes, we are good. good. We yes, are good so on the yes. As we go on, maybe you begin to pick it, you know, the narrative. Yes, we, we have it. Gonna... We have it on our chat box also. Participants are saying that we're good and they're getting a positive response to your question. Very good. So yeah. you can see that the message we're giving for the, the, the new generation is to think about the society, 
So when we talk about later on, you know, not for today, but some other time, I know you must have thought about corporate social responsibility, social entrepreneurship, you know, community enterprise. We need to think about the problems that surround us. And that's where we want the next generation of entrepreneurs to focus. We don't want the next generation of entrepreneurs to do things that we already have, to start producing or replicating things that we have, or to, to, to start imitating or copying things. We want them to base on problems that confront humanity. We want them to base on problems that confront the community so we can move the uh, global world and the global economy forward. So you can see, that is why I developed this business case uh, template. So this business case template is what I normally give to my students when they want to think about ideas. And they say, I tell, can you think about any idea? They tell me, no, we can't. We don't really know what to think about. I said to them, okay, now use this template. So think about, list the problems. So it starts with goals. So I want you, so in your time, I will want you to list the problem that you think that exists around where you live, the problem that exists, maybe the, your, your family face or your community face. So when you have listed these problems, so what I will now ask you to think about is, to think about what value, what can you do, you know, to solve this problem? that you have identified. And then when you talk about the different steps or things you can do to solve this problem, then the next steps I want you to take is to say, what kind of business activities can I deliver in order to solve this problem? So that is where you talk, we're talking about the deliverables. So you now have a list of the activities or things you can do in order to solve these problems which you have identified. So when you've done that, then you now begin to ask again in the next step, what can you do you know, to make this business successful which you have identified the things you can do? And then you have done that, then you go to the next step to think about how can I measure or how can I promote and reach my customers? So how do you reach your customers? And then finally, the next thing that I want you to, to reflect upon is the what resources do you require? Who might be your stakeholders? Who might you need to partner? Remember, in businesses, very rarely you can do everything on your own. So you may have to work with others. So you will need to reflect who are your partners? Who do you require in order to progress this idea? Or what resources do you require in order to progress this idea? So you can see from this template, which I developed, I'm sure you, you'll be shared with the, the presentation. You, you should always use it. Whenever you're trying to generate a, a business idea, whenever you're coming up with a business proposition, Take this, uh, use this template to kind of prompt your thinking. So we begin to question some certain things and begin to think away in a way that is more creative and also in a way that is problem solving. So that way, which we're not going to be talking about today, but some other time we begin to talk about creativity and problem solving in enterprise until we come or until we link the element of creativity and problem solving and innovation then we will not be able to succeed so you can see from my template this gives you an idea how you can ask those questions which we started with and how you can use problem solving to generate a business idea. Okay, so again, as you know, when we talked about the, the template, 
The third part, we talked about value, the benefits, the second part. I said, what value can you create while trying to solve a problem? If you have not created any value, then you have, you're not an entrepreneur. Value relates to innovation. Value re relates to solving a particular need. Value is about experience that you offer the customer a new experience. So in that case, you can see the role of an entrepreneur, as you do, and one of the basic characteristics of an entrepreneur is the say we say is a value creation. So entrepreneurs create value. Entrepreneurs solve problem. Entrepreneurs give us new experience. When you're using your iPhone, whenever you're using your Samsung phone or Sony Ericsson phone, and then you see in the next six months, it changes to a different model. Or in the next one year, they give you a different model. That is the value. They're giving you a new experience. They're giving you a new platform. So as entrepreneurs, value creation is the thing that I will want you, you know, to be one of the aspirations that you're going to have. So whenever you're thinking about starting a business, I want you to ask, what value am I trying to create? So when we think about this value, we're thinking about how can we combine different products or different services in order to target or reach a particular customer segment. Remember, no matter what business idea you come up with, you cannot reach all the customers. So entrepreneurs identify their customer segment. That is the proportion of the customers that you want to target. So then when you know the customers that you want to target, then you're going to ask, how then do I combine the things I want to do in order to reach this set of customers? So until you do that, you, you are not creating a value. And that should always be our focus. So, and then again, like I said, when you try to create the value, then there are things you're doing already by subconsciously without you knowing. So in that way, you're creating a value in respect to the product and service. So in that case, you're producing something that the customers want. So that's what you're doing. So that is where the critical thinking is important. So we need to re continuously reflect and think about what we are doing and how that can be beneficial to the customer. So that way we're thinking about the product and our services. But also we're thinking about pain relievers. So remember we said anything we want to base, any idea we want to generate should be based on problems. So when you're not, if, you, if you're sick or if you're ill and you go to the GP, the GP is going to examine you and then he's going to prescribe some tablets for you in order to relieve the pain. So the same thing entrepreneurs are doing to the customers. Entrepreneurs are trying to relieve the pain of the problems. So in that case, so you should also think about how can I change the customer's experience? How can I relieve the pain that the customers have? when you're designing a business idea. But also, as you're doing that, as you're thinking creatively, you're also thinking about the gains. You also be thinking about the gains. So you should be asking, how do your product create customers gain? What do they gain from that? You know, what will be the outcome? Are they gonna be, you know, without enable them to do something better? Or are you going to offer a product for a cheap price? Are, you, are they going to get a product that is of more quality? Or are, are they going to get a product that is of more, of more brand? What is it that the customers can gain from your activities? 
So you can see one of the things that I want you to take away with the meeting that we're having today is that our business ideas, our business proposition should be based on problems, but also we should also be based on value. We should always strive to create value. And when we do strive to create value, we are now creating something for the customers. We are relieving something, a pain or a problem for the customers, but also we are giving the customers something to enjoy, something to benefit from. So this should be our primary responsibilities as entrepreneurs. So you can see when we do talk about these problems, I said we must also evaluate the problems. The only way, one way we can evaluate the problem is to understand our environment, is to understand our surroundings, is to understand our economy, is to understand the legal issues so that you do not go into trouble or you do not go and break the law of the government. It's also to understand the environment. So what can we do? How can we improve of the environment? But also it's to understand the social element, how people are living and what people want and the, the lifestyle that people engage. So you can see that when you're thinking about starting a business, I would want you to think about evaluating your environment, evaluating the, the circumstances for which you can operate or for which you can launch this business. So PESTO becomes a very key tool for us to do that. So what we do when we try to use the PESTO uh, uh, framework, we analyze the political, which is the P. We analyze the economic, so which is E. We analyze the social, which is S. We analyze the T, which is technological. We analyze the E, which is environment. And then we analyze the L, which is legal. You can see I have tried to populate some of the indicators of the things that we need to look into in each of these segments. So for example, if we are talking about political, maybe political stability, maybe corruption issues, maybe trade restrictions and things like that we need to, we need to consider. If you are talking about economic, maybe exchange rates, interest rate, inflation, inflation rate, we need to think about it and think about how can any of these affect our business ideas? Or how can any of these affect the business plan that you want to propose? But also technological, as we know, technology changes rapidly. So how can the changes in technology affect this business idea that I have? So that you can prepare for it, so that you can innovate and change things when those technology affect your business proposition. Environment, we are thinking about how do we protect the environment? Climate change is also the issues. So we need to think about our business idea and see how that fits into the environment. But also we don't want to break the law. We don't want to break any government regulation. So we need to think about issues related to employment laws, we need to think about issues related to health and safety so that we can obey and operate our businesses within the law. So you can see that the pencil is one of the tools that you can use to evaluate the business environment and see whether this idea that you have is something that's going to work or something that you need to change something. So but within that plan, you can see, I give you a template here. Whenever I, I want to use this PESTO template, I use it in two perspectives. One of the perspectives I look at it is to look at it from 
how can any of these political, economic, social, or technological, how can they offer you an opportunity? How can it offer us a business opportunity? So that we can now develop our business around these elements as an opportunity. But also, I ask the question, when I'm do, using the pestle to say, how can any of these be a threat to my business? And what can I do to overcome those threats? So threats here, yeah, I mean like problems. How can, if I do this, how is it gonna be a problem? Any of these factors so that you can plan against those problems. So you can see the first tool is a very good tool to use to evaluate your idea. It's not good to develop a business idea and go and start the business plan without having evaluated the idea. So I will encourage you always, whenever you're thinking about a business plan, to first of all, think about evaluating the business idea and then see how you can plan against some of these factors. Again, we'll move further, we we'll begin to think about, yes, we can start the business, but then the question is, what are the things we need to check? So it's more now we need to check about what the things that we need in order to start this business. So I want to, us to take a, a three minutes uh, break to watch this video, which I will drop. I don't know if I can drop it on. I'll try to drop it on the chat. So uh, you can also share it if you want to share it live right now. Okay, I can share it live. So yeah. let's share it live. I think you'll need to uh, stop sharing your slideshow and Do you'll need to connect to YouTube directly and then share the screen. Okay, that, okay, that's fine. So share the screen. All right, what? Uh, let me see if I can share the screen first. Just one thing when you were sharing the video, uh, Dr. Paul. Yeah, I wanted to share it? the video. Can I drop it in the chat, maybe? I can drop it in the chat. You can do that. You can do that. Okay, let me try. You can do that it. and we can resume the slideshow then. Okay, that's fine. So yeah. let's try to do that. Okay, so I've dropped it in the chat. So possibly I want everyone to take three minutes to watch the video and then we can resume, we can resume our talk. All right, perfect. Uh, participants, you have the link in the chat box. So uh, please view it on your own and then we can resume in around three, four minutes. And the following part will also be based on the video. So we recommend that you watch it right now. Yes.
How do I get uh, to see the video? Oh, okay. I thought you're watching it already. You can watch it uh, uh, later on privately. I'm going to talk about it now. So just to give us, uh, so you can see from the video, I put it on the link. You can watch it on your own. So you can see the business canvas gives you the opportunity to use this tool when you want to start a business to ask your, you know, ask some questions. The canvas, which is linked to the video, uh, has nine components. So those nine components, you need to answer any of these nine components before you start your business. The first component you should ask, who are my key partners? Who do I need in order to start this business? Then the second element of that uh, tool is what activities will I be doing? in order to do this business. And then the third element, if you also watch the video, what you need to ask is, what are the key resources that I need in order to start this business? And then the fourth element you need to ask is, what value? So what's unique am I going to offer customers? Is it lower price? Is it quality? Is it better brands? What quality, what value are you going to add to these uh, products and services? Then the sixth question you need to ask is, what's the customer relationship? How are you going to build relationship with your customers? And then the next question you need to ask, answer is, who are your main customers? You need to know that. So who are your main customers? And then you then begin to ask, how then do you reach those customers through the channels. So how are you going to reach them? And then the second to the last question is, how then are you going to make money? Where is the revenue going to come from? What are you going to be doing in order to make money? And then finally, the last question you need to answer is, how much is it going to cost you to start this business? What are the things that you will need to spend in order to start this business? So you can see, whenever you're trying to start anything, use this tool to answer these questions. Once you have answered these nine questions, then you're ready to go. You're ready to start. Until, but if you don't have an answer to these nine questions, then your business plan might be problematic. You might not be ready to start. So I would always encourage you to use this tool to answer these uh, questions and then before you get started. Okay, so again, as we see from the uh, canvas, we need to reach our customers. We need to find a way to promote and market until you say, here I am, until you reach your customers, whatever idea that you generate, that you could not reach to your customers, that idea is going to stay with you forever. Until the customers are reached, you have not created any value. You have not created any business. And that is why marketing becomes the most important factor in any entrepreneurial activity. So our marketing plan will now involve how we need to design a roadmap, how we're going to implement you know, customer relationship and how we can reach our customers. So it has to be more a customer focused approach. So when we do that, so we begin to think about some marketing strategies, what we call as, as seven P's or five P's. So we should think about our products. So you must clearly define your product. We should also think about the place. Where are you going to do this business? Is it physical on shop or is it by internet or both? We need to think about promotion. So how are we going to reach our customers? How will we attract customers to know our product? We should also think about the price. As you know, most businesses fail when you get the price wrong. So we should think about the the kind of price that we want to put on our goods and services. 
And also we should think about the process, the ease of transaction. So how are we going to make it easy for the customers to buy or to get our product, but also to pay for it? You know, that will not constitute much hassles, much problems for the customers. But also we need to think about the team, the people, who do we need? Who, who do we want to work with? Who can we recruit? Who can we combine in order to be successful? So you can see with the promotion, then we can decide to choose. Either we use above the line promotion or we do below the line promotion. So above the line, usually we do not have control over above the line and they are very expensive. As a new startup, I would recommend you avoid above the line, unless you want to use local newspapers that are cheap. But below the line is very popular with new entrepreneurs. Below the line is the one that enables you control. You can use social media, you can use Facebook, you can use other you know, interactive uh, customer Instagram, customer focused relationship in order to capture your audience. So you can see I've given some examples of the promotional activities that we can take in order to promote our ideas. Remember, if you don't promote these ideas, you're not going to get any customers. You're not going to make your product successful. Until you promote these ideas, these ideas might remain with you and without you getting anywhere with the idea. So we need to think carefully how we want to promote this idea. But also when we think about how we're going to promote this idea, I want you to think about the cost. So I want you to think about who are you targeting? Who is your target market? So I want you to think about the product that you're promoting. And then I want you to think about the competitors and how, what they are doing. So that way, I will want you to approach your promotion more like a mixed method. So do not have only one approach towards your promotion. So in that way, you can see that we talk about the ideal model of promotion. So where you're trying to use promotion to create an awareness of your product, you're using the promotion to create interest among customers to like your product, but also to uh, buy your product, but also you're trying to create desire you know, uh, for your product. Remember, when we walk into the shops, we want to get Coca-Cola, we want to get Pepsi, we want to buy a drink, is because we desire to have them. So we should be able to find a promotion that enable you, you know, to create that desire among your customers. But also, and the last most important one, is we have to undergo a promotion that enables the customers to purchase your goods, to take action. Until they take action, then you are not, you have not reached your customers. So you can see promotion becomes an important element in our business plan. So whenever you're designing a business proposition, whenever you're designing a business plan, we should think carefully about how we want to promote this idea and how we want to reach our customers. Until we do that, then we're going to have some problems. So overall, you can see today, we have talked about problem identification, that we should always think about problems first, and then think about how then do we solve the problem, and then think about what value are we going to create in order to solve the problem. And when we, when we have thought that, we need to think about how then do we analyze the environment for which we, where we are located, to understand the political, economic, social, and legal and environmental issues. But also we need to now sit down, use the canvas and say, right, what have we got? What's the plan? The canvas will enable you to develop a plan and use that plan to start the business proposition. So just finally, before I end the session, and also, I want to give you a measure of success. 
So we can use a template like this to measure or forecast your profit and loss. So in that case, you could, you know, if you are thinking about writing a business plan, either to give to a bank or to give to an investor. So all these steps that we have followed today, including uh, trying to analyze what might be your possible uh, uh, profit and loss for the first, second or third year will enable you to achieve and to evaluate how successful your idea is going to be. And just a quick one. You can see from the uh, summary of the profit and loss account that I've got here, you should be able to identify how much cash do you have in order to start this business? And also how much do you need to borrow? But within that budget, you should be able to think about the things that you need to spend money the money that you're going to start the business. And then you should be able to forecast how many customers you think you can reach and how much are you going to charge them for your product and services. And then you should be able to work out from your expenditure and your revenue, forecasted revenue, how much are you going to make? For most businesses, you're going to make loss for the first year, for the second year. Most businesses will make loss for even for the third year until you begin to make profit. So this is where I'll bring to a close today's session. We'll, I, I believe that you would have taken some things out of the session about startup and what you will need to do in order to start a business proposition or in order to put a business plan for an investor or for a loan. Thank you.